Before I start on the main topic, something just caught my eye a second ago with regard to West Ham and the kits. <laughs> Basically, they want players to wash their own kits and take their own kits home. I think the, the story or the instruction was something like uh, players have to take their kits, take them home, wash them, return them, and they have to bring in their own water bottles. I mean, like a hot water bottle to sleep, you know, a drinking bottle. You've got to bring in your own drinks. And as someone with four children, I I, I can see what's going to happen a long way off. It's not just children trying to get trying to get 10 people to all do something and remember something is not only possible. Two or three are always going to forget trying to get a squad of 25. to listen, it sounds simple enough. Take your kit home, your sort, your shorts, your socks and your top. Put it in the washing machine, take it out the washing machine, dry it, fold it up, bring it back in time for the match. Sounds simple, right? I, I, all I'm saying is, I think there might be a few people going back to their school days with their hands in the air saying, uh, Sir, I, I forgot my kit. They might be getting the bibs out. That's all I'm saying. I, I, thought, I just thought it was... Um, the kit man might want to take some spares with him. But I understand why they're doing it. For for hygiene, social distancing, so on and so forth. Anyway, the main point of the video is not so much the Jeremy and Gakia story, more the fallout. And I've had a little I've had a little time to think about it. And I think the reaction is disproportionate. And I don't mean the reaction to him refusing to leave. Refusing to leave? Refusing to stay. You're not mine. I don't even mean that. Well, that's been not what I expected as well. I'm not doing a very good job of explaining it, am I? Let me, let me try and get to it. I expected, when this news was broken, for everybody to be aghast, disappointed, that somebody didn't want to stay at West Ham. When they learned the news that he'd, he'd got a new agent, I expected people to... To blame the agent, if if I'm if I'm fair, very recently I did a video about agents, about how much they were taking out the game. I think West Ham paid sixteen million pounds to agents last year. We know we're going to lose thirty million. Well, half of that could be offset by not giving the agents all their fees. We know David Sullivan has a heavy reliance on agents, and because of that, our scouting has been diminished. We didn't really have a scouting set up. He would rely on agents to recommend him players. A bad situation. Moyes has come in, started getting the scouting network back up and running again. Looks like we will hopefully recruit players in the right way. But anyway, I I I, I don't like agents. You know, I I find them, um, I just find them lecherous. I, I find them bloodsuckers. That the way they take money out of the game, I hate. I think it's bad for football. I think there's money in football. And I just think the money gets lost out of the game. It doesn't filter through to the lower leagues. It basically gets spent on a yacht or a Ferrari or something like that. And these aren't players who are excellent. You're not talking about an excellent player who deserves a Ferrari because he's scored 20 goals in the season or anything like that. It just goes out the game. And I am absolutely adamant that an agent's job can be done by somebody else, a family member, the PFA, something like that. And they won't demand from a club... A million pound, two million pound, three million pound to put the transaction through. Basically, my client, that's what they're saying, my client is going to sign on the dotted line for your club, regardless of whether he's there or not, and you're going to pay me to get him to sign. I just think, right, I didn't think it had any place in football anyway. I think in the new football, the new futuristic football, if you want to say the post-coronavirus version of football, everyone skints, I think there's even less reason for agents. I really do. So with that in mind, I thought that was very much going to be the fallout of what's what's been going on. But the fallout has been, and Gio's done a video on it this morning, about the leaking of details from the club. And look, I mean, I've got to hold my hands up. Yesterday, I contacted the club for details, and I put details out. Because, why? Because I wanted to know. I'm just going to put it out there. This may well be unpopular. I'm aware that this is going to be an unpopular video, but I want to know. Should I know? Possibly not. But it's not like I, I want to know the ins and outs of 
the bus driver who drives me to work's contract. No, that's none of my business. But this is the team I support, okay? This is the team I give a lot of money to each and every year. And one of the players doesn't want to stay with us anymore. So the club are saying, well, we've offered him a new contract and he's turned it down. Well, the, the curious fan in me is thinking, I want to know, what was it? What did we offer him? What did we offer him? Pack of digestive biscuits? Million pound a day? What was it? And then, when I'm armed with that information as a fan, I can then make the decision to whether he's being reasonable or not. Because I'm nosy. That's why I tune in. That's why I go and look at websites every day. That's why I want to know all the West Ham news. I want to know all the goings on. It's not just in Gakia's wage. I want to know Declan Rice's wage. I want to know everyone's wage. Not just that, I'd like to know what Lionel Messi's on. I find the whole thing fascinating. I am not just someone who watches a game and then my interest in football then switches off. What I am surprised about is the fallout, particularly on social media, where people seem to be more disgusted with the leaking of the news than they are about, about, about the agent demanding more money, about agents taking more money out of that club. Because one detail we have not been given yet, um, and I'm still interested, I'd like to know. I might ask, how much are the agent demanded? Because that's got to be key, right? Reading between the lines on this deal, I think, if if the numbers are correct, what I've heard is correct, it's on a three-year deal, I think if Jeremy Ngakia never plays another game for West Ham but he signs this deal, he gets a few hundred grand. Not bad, OK? My opinion, not bad. It's up to him to decide whether he thinks that's good, bad or indifferent. Now, I understand that if he gets relegated, that that gets halved. But if Jeremy Ngakia is half as good as his agent seems to think he is, if he gets relegated, surely he plays lots of games for right back. And here's the real thing. If Jeremy Ngakia plays no games, he gets a few hundred grand. If Jeremy Ngakia plays 30 games, 20 games maybe, he's a millionaire. Now, bearing in mind he's played four first-team games, I don't think that's a bad offer. I also think the club have got a wage structure now. Because of the Reese Oxford thing, yes. Whether you think that's right, whether you think that's wrong, we have a wage structure. So you've got to ask yourself, do you want the club to break their wage structure? Well, I think in certain circumstances they do. But as I tried to make the point yesterday, I he's played four games. He is not an established first-team player yet. I think for someone that's not an established first-team player, the chance to earn somewhere between a few hundred grand and a million, million and a half... It's not bad, particularly when it will be reviewed. I also think when we look into the future, we will see the contracts coming down and getting less because the context of the situation has changed. The football has changed immeasurably in the last two months. And what I don't feel has happened here is I don't feel that the agent, the representatives, have advised someone that's very young and said to the lad, things are changing here. People are losing their jobs. People are not going to have jobs to go back to. There are going to be clubs going bust. Beforehand, if you were a young player who didn't quite make it in the Premier League, you go down to League One and you could earn a living. That avenue may not be there anymore. So my own personal opinion was that actually I think if I was advising someone, and not just because of West Ham, because I will put it out there and I will say it now. Again, it might well be unpopular. I thought he did well when he came in, but I think Ben Johnson's better. I still thought we needed to buy a right back. I wouldn't have been happy if we were relying just on Jeremy and Gakia at right back for next season. There you go, I've said it. I think he may not be world class. OK? With that in mind, bearing in mind we've seen four games and it's been a promising start, but that's what it is. I think what he's been offered is reflected and along the lines of a promising start. If that promising start turns out to be consistent growth, then I think you'll see that reflected in the money that he then earns because it goes up incrementally. But as I say, I do not feel 
that the agent has probably advised his client that well. Now, it may well be, and I do think it is, that he has an offer elsewhere. And he goes and has an offer elsewhere. Because only one of three things are possible. He either signs a new contract at West Ham. He either leaves and has nowhere to go. Or he leaves and has a job to go to, which has already been arranged. I think if that happens and he goes on and has a very, very good career, then West Ham may well be left with egg on their faces. Then West Ham may well rue the fact that they didn't offer him more money. But I do understand that at the moment, when West Ham don't know where the next money's coming from, I do think the next television deal is going to be vastly down. If we pay anything more than the remainder of the season behind closed doors, my point is if we then go and play the start of next season behind closed doors, the next TV deal is going to be reflective of that, by the way. Whatever it might have been, five, six billion a year. Don't be surprised if that's three billion or something like that. Why would why would television companies pay the same amount for a lesser product? And with fans not there, it is a lesser product. My point being, no season ticket money, less television money. We have less money to spend on players, on wages, and so on and so forth. So I do not blame West Ham for having a salary cap right now. But I have still... I still think that the agent may well have disadvantaged your client here. Maybe he goes somewhere else. Maybe he goes and signs for 20, 30 grand a week for someone else on a five-year deal. If he does, I'd be amazed that anyone's got that money to splash out. But on this one, I've got to be honest with you, I am more annoyed of the agent and agents again, when I thought the agents would be less, when I thought maybe they'd be keeping their head down, winding their neck in. I'm more annoyed that a player has been persuaded to leave the club.